Thank you very much. I went to school, to university for about three years, and I was a classical double bass major at that point. So all my teachers were uh, convinced that I was going to fulfill the courses, do my recitals, learn the list, and audition for symphony orchestras. And I ran away at about, from that, at about age 19, something like that. I didn't want to do it, because I didn't want to give up all this other music, because all this other music came first for me. Even though I'm Italian and, and my, my family is very European in many ways, um, I love that music and my teachers saw that so they assumed, okay, he's going to get rid of all that other music and just do this. And in those days they tried to make you choose between. Mm -hmm. And I was very stubborn and I said, no, I'm, I'm, and I left. Mm -hmm. And I left school after three years. And I went on the road and I pursued my dreams. I do a lot of classical music now, more than ever. And I just did a commission piece for double bass and string quartet. So that has to be here with the bow and it's a sound. It's all about sound. This music to me is electric bass music. Even though we're playing some jazz too where some people say, why don't you play? Yeah. You know, it also can sound good with the electric bass. Yeah. When I joined Chick Corea in 1985, um, I was intrigued by what I saw Anthony Jackson do. Anthony Jackson was the first pioneer of the six string bass. He got people to build them, and he had a real vision. Um, when I heard him play, I thought, that's interesting. But then when I started to play with Chick, I realized the music could benefit from the low string, and then the high string for the horn, like you know, the soloing things and melodic things that he had me doing. So I felt like it really fit Chick's music. So I, I remember trying to get one. They were very expensive at the time. So um, I was about 25. And I went to Chick and I said, you know, I really want to get this bass for this music. And um, I don't know if I can afford it right now. He said, well, listen, we'll buy the bass and you, we'll take it out of your check every week. And this way you can have it and start playing it. And you can pay it off. By the end of the tour, it'll be, you know, you'll be fine. I played with a lot of other people before that. And I paid a lot of dues playing a lot of crazy gigs with Elvis impersonators. And, you know, when you're young, you're playing, just playing, whatever. Uh, his, when I got with him, he took me all over the world and launched my career, my recording career. He got me a record deal. So I would say that that was a huge blessing. I don't think I was paying any dues. I think I was receiving a gift, really. And I was working very hard, of course, to play that music and really be part of a new sound that he was thinking of. And also, he also gave me a huge gift in that through him I met Wayne and Herbie. And I wound up I've been really solid with Wayne for the last 70, 17 years and really on and off since 1986, so it's been 30 years already. So that was a huge gift. That was a profound thing in my life. And Wayne is like a second father to me. Mm -hmm.